little bit about asthma today uh, to give a little education about it. Asthma basically affects the lungs, as most people know, and it affects in two different ways in the lungs. The lung on the outside of it has a muscle layer, and on the inside has a layer of cells that can secrete mucus. Anything that irritates the lungs, whether it be pollutants from smog or ozone or tobacco smoke, or even allergens like pollens or pet danders, uh, things of that nature, can cause constriction of this muscle, so it squeezes down, or can also produce mucus production. And either way, the lung gets tighter and can lead to symptoms like cough or wheezing and even shortness of breath. Now, some of the things that people can do to help avoid asthma overlap a lot with allergic diseases, <clears throat> such as keeping their windows closed at home, uh, especially in high pollinated seasons, um, not having hot air or even cold air for that matter, irritate the lining of their, of their nasal passages, and also a lot of times can be medication. In terms of medications, there's two different classes. There's what's called maintenance and there's rescue medication. In terms of medications for asthma, there are generally two types of medication. There's emergency medication, rescue, or maintenance. The emergency or rescue medication, uh, most people are familiar with something called albuterol. And what that medication does is it works on that muscle layer of the lung to relax it and try and let the lung dilate. Now, these medications generally are in inhaler form or sometimes in a nebulizer form that's delivered by a machine, but they last roughly anywhere from four to six hours. Another type of medication, which can also be in inhaler form or even in a nebulizer delivery, are maintenance medications. And these, the cornerstones of these are generally corticosteroid inhalation treatments. Um, and these are used on a daily basis, whether you feel good or bad, to prevent asthma symptoms, as opposed to something like the albuterol rescue medication, which is only used as needed. Many times, um, allergies can trigger off asthma exacerbations, and people could have one or the other or both. Oftentimes, it's very, very prudent to get allergy tested when you have asthma to know if allergies are a trigger because avoidance of certain allergens, whether they be pets or certain seasonal pollens or uh, dust mites, for example, can help asthmatics tremendously. Also, they may be benefit from allergy shots as well if needed. And one of the cornerstones for diagnosing if someone has asthma or even following it to see how bad their asthma is, is a breathing test or something called spirometry. It's something that we do in the office setting and basically monitors how well your lung capacity is at any given time, either before a breathing treatment and after a breathing treatment to see how much that muscle in your lung is, is spasming or not. Other things that people can do that are very quick and easy is something called a peak flow meter, which is basically just blowing into a tube and monitoring how much uh, lung capacity you may have and following this over time for any changes. For more tips like this, please visit us at clearai.com.